Let's talk about sponges. You see me using these a lot, and I just get them from Michaels. They're called artist sponges or sea sponges. And if you'll look at the sponge, I just want to make sure everybody's using it the right way. There's a prickly side and a smooth side. I use the prickly side when I paint my greenery. So I use dark green and light green. I tap some of it off. You don't need a whole lot on your uh, sponge when you're doing this, and you just bounce the sponge. See, if you use the wrong side, the smooth side, you'll get thicker texture, which although sometimes isn't like bad, but I like to use the prickly side because you will get much finer texture and a little bit more control. If you don't have a sponge, a lot of people are asking me this question, try an old rag or a dish cloth. See the, the fine texture on there. Just have a little bit of dark green and light green on there. And if you uh, just tap that as well, you bounce it, get kind of like a flat side of it and use that texture to your advantage, that also gives you a very similar texture to a artist sponge. So that's something that I think a lot of people have. Another thing you can use is a paper towel, especially if you're going for the larger texture like I did in my flower painting. Just crumple up a paper towel and dip that into dark green and light green. Look at the difference here. All you have to do is bounce it. You can even uh, use some of the points in your paper towel and they kind of look like leaves. So if you're doing more close-up leaves, that is a great option if you don't have a sponge. Here is another option. You could use um, a Brillo pad or like a dish sponge, like one of the scrubbies that you use to clean. Now this one's a little bit more unconventional, but you can, oh, let's get a piece of the paper here that's clean. You just bounce that. That has a little bit of texture. You can use the point if you are going for pointed leaves like that, or you can kind of fold it so that you get more of a flat end. Dip into that paint, I'm kind of running out, and start bouncing that too. That gives you very fine texture. Basically, you can use anything in your house that you don't mind getting paint on that has some of the texture similar to the sea sponge. Um, I just use sea sponges all the time because I have a collection, I have a whole collection of them that I use in my classes, so it works out well. But here, that's just comparing the different textures. Another one is if you have an old toothbrush, look at the texture on that. Now this one's a little bit harder to do, but you still have a little bit of that texture and you um, have a lot more control because you're only using a tiny, tiny bit at a time. You just kind of tap that as well. But because it's such a tiny surface, I suggest using one that has more surface area to help you get um, the painting done a little faster. Unless you have a lot of patience, this would work just great. Just make sure, especially if you're doing greenery, you do dark and light green together. You want to have that highlighting and shading. And there you go. Let me know if you come up with any other alternative sponge ideas.